iron 2 ions will eventually undergo oxidations which will lose one of the electrons to become iron 3 ions. This is why you see it become more and more positive. Meanwhile, when iron 3 ion want to go back to become the iron 2 ions, it will eventually receive one electron which undergo the process of reductions. Let's look at how we're going to convert iron 2 ion to become iron 3 ions. First, we're going to prepare a test tube that fill with iron 2 sulfate solutions. As we can see here, we're going to have iron 2 ions. And we know in order to form iron 3 ions, we're going to lose one of the elect electrons. So losing electron is oxidation. So of course, we need to have oxidizing agent. So for today, I'm going to use bromine water as my oxidizing agent. Of course, you can use any other oxidizing agent that we learned before. And don't forget, when we have the halogen in the molecule form, they are oxidizing agent. When they are in the halide form, they are eventually the reducing agent. So now we're going to add in our bromine water drop by drop. We can observe the color changes. So if you look closely, the brown color of the bromine water eventually changed to colorless. This is due to it itself is an oxidizing agent, means it will undergo the process of reductions. So this is why the bromine molecules will receive the electron to become bromide ions. As we know, when they are in the halide ions, they are colorless. Meanwhile, we also observe that the iron 2 sulfate solutions in the beginning is the light green in color turns to brown color because we know iron 2 has been oxidized to become iron 3 ions. So how do you remember the color changes is the good boy from green to brown. Do you realize that in our oxidation half equations, we only release one of the electrons. Meanwhile, our reductions half equations we receive two electrons. So in order to balance this one, we're going to times two to all of the things in our oxidation half equations. So this is why we're going to have something like this. Now the electron is balanced, we're going to write our overall ionic equations. So if you forget, we're going to combine whatever on the left hand side of the arrow together and whatever on the right at the right hand side like this. But now, after we merge both of them, we realize that we have two electrons on the left and two electrons on the right. So eventually we can remove the electron on the both side and now it becomes something like this. So this is the overall ionic equations. Now we're going to look at how we're going to convert iron 3 ions to become iron 2 ions. First, we prepare a test tube that fill with iron 3 chloride solutions. As we can see here, now we have iron 3 ions. As we mentioned before, you need to receive the electron so that it go back to iron 2 ions. So receiving electrons mean reduction process. So of course we need reducing agent. So today we're going to use zinc powder and of course you can use any other reducing agent. And we're going to add in our zinc powder slowly and we're going to observe the changes. So what you can see here is some of the zinc powder eventually dissolve in the solutions because it itself is the reducing agent so it means it will undergo oxidations. So the zinc powder eventually oxidizes to become the zinc 2 plus ion. But at the same time, the iron 3 chloride will change to brown to light. This indicates that eventually the iron 3 ion changes to become iron 2 ions. This is why the color changed from brown back to light green. So same thing again, you realize that the electron is eventually not balanced. So how to balance it? We're going to times 2 for the reduction half equations, which will become like this. And now we can just merge together to form the overall ionic equations and remove the electrons. And this is our final form of the overall ionic equations. But of course, this is not sufficient to prove that the iron 2 ions and iron 3 ion is eventually present in the solutions. So this is why we need to do the further verifications. 
The solution that we're going to use is going to be please see again properly twice. So double P means twice. So those are potassium thiocyanide, sodium hydroxide, ammonia, potassium hexacyanoferrate. So you need to remember the color as well. So for most of the times, iron 2 ions we have lighter in color. Meanwhile, iron 3 ion we have darker in color. Now it's very popular with the RGB. So it's why we have now RGB. So for the potassium thiocyanide, we have pale red, which is lighter red, and the blood red is going to be darker in the red color. Or if you forget, remember, this is the personal training. Personal training is very difficult. This is why sometimes we bleed and blood is red in color. Next, we're going to have a sodium hydroxide. This is the one most popular. And for sodium hydroxide, when we drop into the solutions, eventually it will form a green precipitate. And brown precipitate for the iron three ions. But why do they say excess? Excess means that once the precipitate is formed, we will still continue adding more sodium hydroxide to make sure that whether the precipitate will dissolve or go away. But for this case, it wouldn't go away. Same observation for ammonia. So how we remember is good boy. And now we're going to have the potassium hexacyanoferrate 2. So how we remember the formula is going to be, you see, hexacyanol means we have six of the cyanide and we have the ferrate means iron. So we have iron 2. But in order to balance this one, we have negative 6 plus 2, we have negative 4. But we know potassium is a positive. That's why we need to have 4 of them to balance off the negative 4. This is why we have potassium 4 here. And if you want to remember the color, you see, pH means what? Public holiday. So public holiday, no more Monday blue. So this is blue in color. As we mentioned before, iron 2 is going to be lighter in color. Iron 3 is going to be darker in color. And the one last one is potassium hexacyanoferrate 3. This is a more special one where iron 2 now finally is darker in color. But now his friend iron 3 is no more precipitate. So this is how you're going to verify the iron 2 and iron 3 ions. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.